These cannons, as a matter of fact, I'm sure these cannons were stacked. And so my fast drawing, you can imagine lowering cannons through a cargo hold and making a pile of cannons, uh, the forward cargo hatch, another pile of cannons. Looking at the archival material, went back to the hotel and started scrambling on the internet and looking up what might be possible information that we could find in the field related to the Quitta Merchant, the 1699 Captain Kidd shipwreck, which we knew was being actively hunted by treasure hunters just 3.6 miles away from us. They were digging in the river. So we put our notes together, uh, completed a basic site plan on this pile, again seeing the orientation, this being the dominant pile that's stacked the way it was in a the hole, these being some loose cannons that undoubtedly have rolled and tumbled over the years. Uh, you can't tell from this particular two-dimensional drawing, but uh, cannon number eight, as we fondly like, like to call it, is actually protruding out of the ballast pile, but it's two feet off the bottom. It was held there long enough to be fused by biological activity, so the timbers deteriorated and you're left with this cannon frozen in time, which showed us or told us that this is part of the original structure area of stacking, and these have certainly just tumbled out of the pile. Uh, we received a permit, we talked with the government, uh, Francis in particular, and uh, the, uh, his office, uh, the ONPCS, and we suggested, we said, look, we know treasure hunters are looking for this site. Uh, we've worked on many a treasure site that's been looted and uh, taken up for salvage efforts. If you want to let them renew a contract, pick up 50% of the objects, then so be it. We'll come back, we've replicated cannons, we've reconstructed sites. But if you want Indiana University involved, obviously it's all going to belong to the government. Uh, we're interested in making it into a park, a preserve, and we want to do minimal impact to the site with our own scientific investigation. We received our permit, so in August we returned. We brought Richard Zacks in, which we hoped would be here today, and uh, I spoke with him twice today. He's uh, sorry he couldn't come in. He has a, a family uh, with some terminal illness, so he's not here, but we brought Richard Zack in. Uh, Jeff Conrad came along. Uh, this is Fritz, one of, the, of our research associate grad students in Francis's office. And we talked about our evidence <clears throat> and where we wanted to go with this. Uh, we also met with uh, Tracy Bowden, the longtime uh, 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 salvor in Dominican Republic that's working with the collaboration of the government on the Concepcion site, a very important site at Silver Shoals. And he was hired by the treasure hunting company to dig in the river. And he just completed the digging, and he had evidence, but no shipwreck. So he showed us some of these pieces of wood, which are quite remarkable. And this is Richard Zacks holding one of the pieces of wood. And uh, this is obviously conjecture, but you can see even on the wood that it's got a carved uh, initial in here, uh, a large W, which is probably just coincidental. But we think that these pieces of wood may be off the site. That's still to be proven. We also went out and looked with Richard Zack, and, and he said, you know, Charlie, I, I published this, Time Magazine, 1992. I published the Captain Kidd shipwreck, the Quitta Merchant, now the Adventure Prize, is on Catalina Island in the Saltwater Lagoon. Well, the bad news is the Saltwater Lagoon now is quite dry. Um, so we walked, I mean, we promised them we'd go look in the Saltwater Lagoon, and we did. We looked and thought about it. And one of our endeavors, uh, we've got our geologists here. Earl's going to be looking at this, and Claudia from Geological Sciences. We're going to look at the dynamics of this lagoon because this may represent uh, uh, what's called a careening place, where you would take a ship, haul it over on its side, work on it, fix it every six months, particularly due to the Torito worms. And if so, this could be a very significant site. We have a careening site like this in the Cayman Islands, but it's still three, four feet of water. So it's going to be important to look at the lagoon area. Zach's has testimony indicating that the ship was left in the lagoon on Catalina. So uh, we want to look at the lagoon. We also then took Richard Zach's to the site. The site, I mean, look at the proximity of the shore here. We're 35 feet to 70 feet offshore. Fairly rough day out there. We uh, uh, used a boat, but this is the day that Hurricane Dean was hitting the island. We managed to get on the site, bounce around for a while, get some information. Uh, but a little bit later that day, this is what it looked like. A little bit rough out uh, was Hurricane Dean came, and we have to thank Dr. Conrad for taking that quantum large leap off that rock to get back in the boat again. Uh, but we managed to get back about a two-hour and 20-minute boat ride for what should have been 15 minutes, turned our boat in, and then began to discuss again more about the, the evidence we had found. We did complete a site plan, and you note that we have the uh, stacked cannons and anchors at this particular pile, a few isolated ones, a few more rolled in the middle, uh, and then this second pile 
that is lower but also oriented muzzle to cascabel, cascabel to muzzle, somewhat in a stacking form that's in the, what we surmise maybe the bow area of the ship. Now, uh, again, Richard Zacks can't be here, so I'll just for a couple of minutes talk about Captain Kidd. Uh, you know, this is a, a, a Blackbeard. We know this is 1724 woodcut of Blackbeard, the pirate. Popularized, we like to think of Captain Kidd as kind of being a cutthroat pirate like Blackbeard and others. But that's not really truly the case. Instead, what we do know is that Captain Kidd was truly a businessman. Uh, in 1690, he moved to New York. Uh, he married a, a widower that had quite a bit of money, lived in Wall Street. Uh, several people got together and talked about a venture, uh, a, uh, uh, Livingston, and then Richard Coote later became Lord Bellamont. And they decided to finance Captain Kidd because there weren't really enough uh, ability within the Royal Navy to capture all the pirates and all the action, plus fight the French and uh, take over the world like the English like to do. So Captain Kidd... Uh, from New York, and with a population of about 5,000 in uh, 1695, was given a commission, and uh, Lord Bellamont petitioned to the Parliament, and he was issued this proclamation, or what we call a letter of marquee. It's a letter of a privateer. So uh, William III, King by the grace of God of England and Scotland, and so on, gave this commission January 26, 1695. We know that Kidd was <clears throat> provided a boat, what he called the Adventure Galley and it was launched in May of 1696 out of England. So he went from New York to England, picked up the vessel, armed it, and then went out to sea. His voyages took him from England back to New York to pick up a crew, and then you pick up a crew in New York in 1696, you pretty much pick up a crew that's been out in the Caribbean before, it's been out and probably been pirates themselves, basically. But you put the crew on board, he sails around the horn, comes around, and goes into Madagascar, and Madagascar being a pirate haven. This is a woodcut again from 1724. Uh, was known island of pirates where they would careen their ships and they would uh, work to look for the vessels that were coming around from uh, uh, the Indian Ocean area. Well, uh, he had some troubles. He had a mutiny on board. Before the mutiny, he killed his gunner, uh, Gunner Moore hit him in the head with a bucket, and I've heard Richard Zacks tell this story about premeditated murder with a bucket. It's probably not really going to fly, but he was accused of murder for killing the, the gunner, and the gunner's last words were, the captain's finally done me in, as he died the next day from this wound of a crushed skull. He did capture the Quitta Merchant. Uh, the Quitta Merchant was a vessel that was near the Red Sea area. Um, this is a woodcut of the uh, Adventure Galley capturing the Quitta Merchant, the only one we have that may depict the actual vessel type. And then he came back to Madagascar. In Madagascar, he had lots of problems. I won't go through the whole history of this, uh, where, where I'm pleased to announce that uh, the Dean and Jeff and I have negotiated with National Geographic. They'll be doing filming and a documentary, and you're going to see all the ins and outs of Captain Kidd with that, I'm sure, as they start filming in March. But in Madagascar, he had problems with the Adventure Galley. Uh, he took all the cannons off, put it on board the Adventure Prize, a Quitta Merchant, and he burned the Adventure Galley and ultimately sailed back into the Caribbean. Ended up having through uh, a series of events, he, knew he was accused of piracy, went back to New York, ended up going to England, thought he'd go back and pick up his adventure galley that he left behind on an island in the Caribbean, the Catalina Island, but instead we know that Captain Kidd uh, had problems. One of the main issues that we know was that he had this letter he had gotten from the Quitta Merchant, uh, their authorization letter, which was a French pass, there were two of them, and this French pass given from the King of France meant that he had a legitimate prize. Remarkably, these two French passes that he kept in the sewn coat of his back, of his tails of his coat, he turned over for his trial, but they disappeared. His two-day trial is, uh, uh, found him guilty of not only piracy, because these passes were not produced, but also of murder, and then Captain Kidd was hanged. And talking about a bad history, not only was he hanged, but the first time they strung him up, the rope fell off, and he fell to the ground, got back up, they had to hang him a second time. Uh, then his body was put out, of course, for years to warn others about piracy. And they've even found the chains they now in the British Museum. Meanwhile, I think what I'm going to go with, as far as Captain Kidd's story, is this book, The History of the Pirates, uh, by Captain Charles Johnson, which was published in 1724, a contemporary of this time, and many of the woodcuts are from there. And We've got a copy of the book, and I, I think he really tells about Captain uh, Kidd. And first off, you notice his list of pirates 
Blackbeard and others. There's no mention of Captain Kidd. And instead what he writes, if I can read without my glasses, 